Hey guys, today we're going to be going over the Rogue Blackwing Lair loot priority. Uh, we're going to be ranking every item that drops in Blackwing Lair based on how good it is and how much DKP you should spend on the item. Even if you're not in a DKP guild, um, I still think it's important to understand what items are good and just like, you know, get an understanding that certain items are going to be a lot better than the majority of the items that come out of Blackwing Lair. So, we're going to be judging this criteria based on number one, how strong is the item relative to the options available right now? Number two, how long is the item best in slot? So if it goes all the way to Nax Ramus, that would obviously be really good. If you're going to replace it in Zolgrub, you know, maybe not as much. And the final thing is going to be, we're going to obviously want to factor in the drop rate and the rarity of an item uh, when we're, you know, determining how valuable it's going to be. So the most valuable item is going to be Drake Fang Talisman. You're going to be using this item in Nax Ramus. It's the only item in Blackwing Lair that you will never replace in PvE. Everything else you will replace. So that is the reason why this is the highest value item. You're going to use it forever. It's obviously very, very good. There's a rogue trinket from Dire Maul that gives 2% hit, and it is the third best trinket. It's near Abyss right now. And when... You add 56 attack power to an item that's, you know, on the borderline of being best in slot. It becomes very, very good. So this is an immediate boost to damage for any uh, any rogue, and you're going to use it a long time. So it is just no brainer. Really, really important item for your rogue, and uh, I think the most valuable item in all of Blackwing Lair for its longevity. Next, we have chromatically tempered sword. Now. This is a weapon. Obviously, weapon is the most important item for a rogue, especially this is a main hand weapon, and a very, very good one. Good stats, good damage, and it does more damage than Viscag, and the stats are better than the proc, so it's a significant upgrade over Viscag, and obviously a huge upgrade if you don't have Viscag. Now, uh, the item has a very low drop rate. It has an 8% drop rate from Chromagus, so this is you know, almost on par with, with Drake Fang Talisman. If it weren't for the fact that Drake Fang Talisman is used for so long, I would say Chromatically Tempered Sword is going to be a very important item that, because of its low drop rate. So you might not see a lot of these. When you do see it, you know, tr try and snatch that thing because uh, it is not going to drop very much and it is very, very good. And the last of, I guess, the big three items is going to be Maladath. Now Maladath, it might not seem, I guess, that great on the surface, but if you understand what the, the plus four swords does, this is actually an excellent sword. And basically, to give a really quick recap of what, why the sword skill is good, if you have 305 weapon skill, you are going to get 3% hit against a raid boss. And if you have 308 weapon skill, you are going to get an increase to your glancing blow damage. So when you attack a high level target and you know you do less damage because it says glancing hit, you actually are going to do about 40% less damage. If you get the plus three, uh, well, here you're going to get plus four swords, but if you go up to 308 weapon skill, you're actually going to eliminate the penalty from the glancing blow nearly uh, entirely. So you're going to do almost full damage with your glancing blows. So it is a big damage boost. And it's a fast offhand sword, so it's it's just all in all really good. And as long as you're not human, you're going to really highly value this item on your rogue. Uh, the reason why humans obviously wouldn't want this is because they have sword spec, and you already get five hit from, or sorry, five weapon skill from your rogue talents. So you're already gonna have too much sword skill. So not good for a human rogue. So. Uh, just wanted to point out that th these three items are really, really good, and they're much better than anything else in Blackwing Lair. So these are the items you stockpile your DKP for. These are the items that like matter most in Loot Council, and anything else is really not that big of a deal compared to these three items. But now on to um, the next set of items. So we've got the boots. Now these boots are really good. They are a big upgrade over the second best item, which is Bloodfang boots, and a big upgrade over Night Slayer boots. And that's because really 
both tier one and tier two boots kind of suck. And these boots are actually, you know, just good stats. They're just very good. So they're really, really good. These are going to go to dagger rogues first. And the reason is because sword rogues are going to be going for tier two, eight set. So the sword rogue is going to get the blood fang boots and eventually use the set bonus. Whereas the dagger rogue is not going to go for the set bonus. And so they're going to get the uh, individual item first. Uh, overall, really good item. Once all the dagger rogues have this and, uh, this is still going to be good for sword rogues. And when they replace their blood fang eight set, they're going to go over to the, the boots of shadow flame. These are best in slot until Nax Ramus. So very, very good item. They draw from Nefarian and they're, they're an okay drop rate, but all in all, uh, besides the three premier items, I think the, the highest value item in Blackwing Lair. Next, we've got the Blood Fang chess piece. Now, this thing is really good, and it's a lot better than, than the tier one chest. And 2% hit, 1% crit, com combined with the agility and the strength, it's just has a ton of stats. It's the, uh, the biggest upgrade that you're going to get over, over tier one. And it's just a really good item. It drops from the last boss, Nefarian, and it doesn't have the greatest drop rate. So I think this is you know, up there as one of the most important rogue items. And uh, definitely if you're a sword rogue, this is the best piece of blood fang that you, you would ideally, like if you were to pick an order uh, of which to get the items, I would say like, you know, blood fang chest is definitely going to be the most valuable. And we're going to get to some of the later blood fang pieces that kind of suck. So really, really good piece. Now we have uh, Prester's Talisman. So this is going to be a little bit of a drop off from the last two items. It is it is good. It is a moderate upgrade over the Anixia neck. It's it's not that much better, but it is best in slot until Nax. So you are going to use this thing for a long time. It is still an upgrade. It's just not the biggest upgrade. It doesn't have the greatest drop rate and it drops from the last boss Nefarian. So a lot of factors going into why this is a valuable item. But um but still, don't want to take anything away from that. It's still good. It's still better than Nixie Tooth Pendant by a, a fair bit, but um, not a huge upgrade by any means. Now we go to the next set of items. We will start with the Blood Fang Bracers. Now, these are actually a huge upgrade over Bracers of the Eclipse, and they, they are very, very good. The only, I guess, reason why they aren't higher and they're not in the high-value items is because they drop from the first boss and they have a high drop rate. So it's just an easy item to get. So they are very good and much better than you, what you have going into Blackwing Lair, but you're, you know, they're not the rarest item here. So that's why they're not ranked too high in terms of value. Next, we have the Master Dragon Slayer Ring. Now, this item is actually best in slot until Naxxramas. But it's a very minor upgrade over Don Julio's. So if you have Band of Acuria and you have Don Julio's, it's a minor upgrade over Don Julio's. So I would not, if you're in that situation, I wouldn't put much value in this item. It's also a guaranteed drop every single week. It, you, as long as you kill Nefarian, the last boss, he drops his head every week. So you will get this item every single week. You will get it eventually. So I don't put too much stock in this item. However, if you do not have Band of Akira, it's going to be a big upgrade for you right away. If you don't have Don Julio's, it's obviously going to be a big upgrade. It is better than Quick Strike Ring as well. And it is Biss until Nax Ramus. So even though it's not better than a lot of other rings by much, it is it is best in slot for, for quite a while. So next we have the Blood Fang Belt. This is another moderate upgrade. And uh Again, loses a little bit of value because it drops from the second boss and it has a high drop rate. So again, relatively easy to get. Not that big of an upgrade over tier one belt, but uh, you know, decent, decent enough. Next, we're gonna go to the low value items. So when I say low value, I it's gonna depend on your situation, but we've got, we'll start with the blood fang boots, right? The blood fang boots are not good. They are barely, barely better than the tier one boots. And you are going to use them on your rogue, 
unless you get your hands on the boots of the shadow flame so they are the second best boot but the main reason you're going to be using you know picking up this item is for the eight set so it is not going to be a power spike until you get the eight set and just keep in mind that it it well it doesn't have the greatest drop rate ever it is going to be relatively uh low value because it's just they're just not very good until you get the eight set now everything i just said about the boots multiply to the shoulders because the shoulders are worse than the boots they're not you just you're not going to equip these pretty much ever unless you want to look cool or you have the eight set so until you get the eight set you're not going to use these they're not good in pvp they're not good in uh in raiding they're just they're just not very good so if I had to pick the last piece of blood fang, it would be this one, right? You're not you're not going to even worry about using this item until you have the eight set. So, pretty weak. Uh, next, we've got the the gloves. Now, the gloves do have uh, they're kind of the same boat where you're not going to use them until you have the eight set in raiding. However, because of the effect that you're immune to disarm, you will use these in PvP. So they are good against warriors and um, the off rogue that is running repost but uh, these are going to be uh, good in pvp and besides that you're not going to use them until you have the eight set so you're gonna it's kind of interesting to think about like with the blood fang pieces these three are not very good but if you have eight set they are going to be very good obviously because they're gonna they're gonna give you the bonus so it's up to you how you want to i guess manage that uh, how you're going to accumulate the pieces but I probably wouldn't out the gate be jumping to to spend all my DKP or you know trying to get these right away since I won't equip them for a really long time. And finally, we have Cloak of the Fire Maw. Now this thing is a side grade over Cape the Black Baron. In terms of damage, they're both going to give you like virtually the same damage. It's it's neck and neck. Um, the edge Cloak of the Fire Maw has is it gives you some stamina, but again, this is really not high value. This is not something you want to really be breaking the bank over this is a niche thing uh, if you want the extra stamina you know you can snag it if no one else wants it but i wouldn't be too worried about this item and that's pretty much it for for pve um i guess i guess i can jump down the last thing i can mention for pve is um the venomous totem this is actually has some applications you can use this item and unequip it and vanish in classic if it turns out that you can activate this item and then switch the trinket without removing the effect uh, it gets a little better uh, even if you have to wait for the effect to end to swap out the trinket you still have vanish as a rogue so you can uh, swap it out in combat but keep in mind that this trinket is going to be a very very small damage increase if you do set it up all properly and it's, it's not very good on Horde side because you're probably going to have, you know, Wind Fury on your main hand. So this is a very niche thing. It's kind of a fun thing more than anything. If you want to try and uh, use it to give yourself a small damage boost and then swap it out, you could try. But, again, don't don't spend all your DKP on this thing. It, it's, it's very niche, and it's something you could try and get the most out of, but really not very good. Uh, and then we have Dragon Fang Blade. Now, this is a very weird item. Because this is actually the second best main hand and the second best offhand. It's actually a very good dagger. It's just not best in slot in either hand. So if you already have a, a Perdition Blade and you already have Core Hound Tooth, you're not going to use this item. Um, you could use it in PvP for a small stamina boost, but in raiding, you're not going to use this item. However, uh, if you have if you have only one or neither of the best daggers it actually becomes really, really good because it's it's really not that much worse than Perdition in the main hand. It's really not that much worse than Core Hound Tooth in the offhand. So this is actually a very good dagger. It just is in kind of an awkward position because it's not best in slot. It's not better than the other options. So if you don't have one of the best uh, daggers already, definitely snag this thing. It's definitely worth it and it's barely worse. So it's not that big of a deal if you potentially delay getting the actual best um, alternative uh, I would snap it up just so that you start, you know, being able to use a raid dagger right away. So that's pretty much it for PVE, I guess. I mean, these items suck. Don't don't take the Dragon High Belt or the Bulwark. Terrible items. 
Uh, the cloak, don't take this either. It's not very good for a rogue. It's better for a warrior. Uh, it is still worse than both Black Baron and Fire Maw. So you should not be taking this from your warriors. And uh, there's better options. So that's pretty much it for PvE. I guess uh, on to PvP. So there's actually quite a bit of uh, options when it comes to PvP items. And all of these items are actually, except for the the chest, this is very niche. Uh, these five items are actually, they're actually good. Uh, we'll start with the Claw of the Black Drake. This thing's actually an amazing Hemo weapon for PvP. It's barely, barely worse than Chromatically Tempered Sword, but has a much higher drop rate, and it drops earlier in the raid. Uh, very good main hand. Good stats, good damage, good speed. This is this is a good PvP weapon. The main, I guess, con with this item is that it's not a sword for raiding. But if if you're a PvPer, uh, this item is actually very good for a Hemo Rogue. So, a great item. Uh, this ring is actually insane. This is the best in slot PvP ring forever. You you will use this ring for all of time in Classic. It is really really good. It has a ton of stamina, and uh, for that reason, it is the best ring. So. If you're a PvPer, you know, keep an eye out for this thing. It does have a, you know, it does drop from Nefarian, and it's not the greatest drop rate, but great ring. Uh, then we have the shoulders. These things are actually insane as well. Un unless you have the Warlord shoulders, uh, or, you know, marsh Field Marshal shoulders. This this item is actually going to be best in slot until Naxxramas. So it's really, really good, especially if you are not uh, high rank. And... Uh, just a, just a great item. A lot of stamina, and then uh, the attack power is good, obviously. Next, we've got the Heart Striker. Now, this thing is best in slot for PvP. It's slightly better than the Blaster Shot, so if you already have it, you know, I wouldn't worry too much. It's just a, three more stamina, uh, and then uh, it's got attack power. But the main thing is it's it got more stamina than the, the Launcher. But it is a low drop rate. Uh, but it is Biss, so that's nice. Now you have the the Dragon Breath hand cannon. Now this thing is actually uh, actually decent, just not as good as Heart Striker. Similar drop rate, not much to say. Just a little worse than Heart Striker. Still very good. Around the same level as Blaster Shot. So again, I wouldn't probably fuss too much if if this one dropped and you already have Blaster Shot. But I guess the last PvC item we're gonna mention is the 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 jerkin it's you could use it against a uh, shadow priest or a warlock in like duels it's not going to drop much you're not going to see it but hey you could you could nab it and use it for niche uh encounters in pvp but that's pretty much it the only item that i have not mentioned is going to be spine shatter in pvp i guess you could use this thing it's not terrible uh, it does less damage than claw the black drake it also has worse stats it's kind of bad, but it is going to be better than any blue you can get in terms of like a Hemo weapon. So if if this is going to get disenchanted and you want a weapon for Hemo spec, nab this thing. It's really not that bad. Uh, and uh, it's going to be better than anything you can get pre-raid. So. But yeah, that's pretty much it for, uh, I believe, everything. I guess closing remarks would be uh, just... What items are going to be for dagger? What items are going to be for sword? So as a dagger rogue, you're going to want the the boots of the shadow flame, obviously. You're going to, even though you're not going to get full tier two, at some point you are going to want the chest, the bracers, and the belt. They are better than the alternatives that you get, even though you know you might not get the uh, the eight set going. And as a dagger rogue, the you're going to be using age core leather gloves unless classic comes out and the proc chance for blood fang is just absurd. Uh, dagger rogues are not going to be aiming for the eight set because they're going to use aged core leather gloves. Um, the other pieces of blood fang, like as a dagger rogue, I am not interested in any of them except for the hands. Uh, so for these three, the hands, those are going to be nice to snag once all the sword rogues have them uh, just for the disarm effect for PvP. But the shoulders... And the boots really, really are not going to be good. Never going to use them as dagger rogue. Now, for sword rogue, obviously you're going to want to collect all of the pieces of tier two. And while there's three that are really good, you know you are going to 
end up snagging these bad ones um, eventually for the set bonus. And the set bonus is going to be a pretty big spike in damage. So it, it is important to kind of, I guess, prioritize it. But, you know, in the end, you are going to have some, some bad items. One final, I guess, uh, thing you might mention as we're going through the items. You're not going to see a lot of crit on these items. So you're going to see that besides the chest, like pretty much everything just says hit. And uh, the belt has crit, but the ring, the wrists, the chest has two hit, the boots. I mean, just these don't have either. There's not a lot of crit in Blackwing Lair. So just keep that in mind that you are going to have uh, a lot of hit and maybe crit will get a little more valuable in, uh, in Blackwing Lair. So that's pretty much it. If I missed anything, feel free to leave it in the comments. Let me know what you guys think of these items. And thanks for watching and good luck on your, uh, <laughs> your Drake Fang and your Chromatic Sword luck.